What's up everybody, Gen X Dividend Investor here. A subscriber on my free Dividend Discord server suggested that I run a series of polls to let people vote on their favorite stocks across each of the 11 sectors, and so far hundreds of votes have been cast, and in this video I'm going to reveal the winners for the top 5 REIT dividend stocks for 2020, and then at the end of this video I'll share an inspirational story, so stay tuned for that. For context, I run a free Dividend Discord chat server, which is listed in the description of this video, and which comes up when you type World's Largest Dividend Discord, or just Dividend Discord in Google. And as is my normal disclaimer, just consider this entertainment and not financial advice. I also want to thank you for taking a moment out of your day to watch this video. Please consider hitting the thumbs up button, subscribing if you haven't yet, and click that bell notification. Thanks, I really appreciate your support. Okay, stock time. For reference, the sectors are energy, materials, industrials, consumer discretionary, consumer staples, healthcare, financials, information technology, communication services, utilities, and finally, real estate. So let's look at how the real estate sector as a whole has been doing in the last five years compared to the other sectors and to the S&P 500. So we see that the S&P 500 has returned about 68%, whereas the real estate sector has returned only 15%, so underperforming during that time frame. We also see that the worst sector has been energy at minus 56%, and the best has been tech at 187%. If I had to guess, I'd say that in the short term we'll see more oil company dividend cuts if things don't turn around quickly, but I'd also wager that in the medium term oil may rebound nicely. So it might be worth considering investing in oil as a risky capital appreciation play. So what exactly are REITs? REIT stands for Real Estate Investment Trust and are companies that own, and often operate, income producing real estate. REITs own many types of commercial real estate, from office and apartment buildings, to warehouses, to hospitals, shopping centers, and more. REITs can be a really great way to invest in real estate without putting a lot of money down, nor with you having to deal with tenant issues, nor building maintenance. Here's a screenshot of the industries that the Global Industry Classification Standards Taxonomy breaks REITs into. Now the two main industries are equity REITs and real estate management and development, which are then broken down further into REITs you'd recognize, like industrial REITs, healthcare REITs, etc. Equity REITs tend to specialize in owning certain building types, such as apartments, office buildings, malls, and such. Mortgage REITs often make loans secured by real estate, thus I like to think of them basically as finance companies. If you want to invest in the real estate sector as a whole, you could consider ticker XLRA, which is the Real Estate Select Sector Spider Fund, which has been around for about five years. Real estate represents about 2.61% of the S&P 500, though I personally like to hold a bit more in my portfolio. Now using Dividend Channel's Total Return Drip Calculator, we see that if you had invested 5 years ago that XLRE had returned an annualized 6.92%, which significantly underperformed SPY over that same time frame. Ok, let's jump into the poll results. The 5th most popular real estate stock in the poll with 26% of voters is American Tower, ticker AMT, an owner and operator of cell towers in several continents around the world, including in North America, South America, Europe, Asia, and the Middle East and Africa. They also provide other communication services. They currently have a consensus analyst rating of buy, an OK 8 consecutive years of dividend increases, a low 1.78% yield, an awesome 20% 3 year dividend CAGR, and a nice low beta of 45. As you probably know, using payout ratio for REITs doesn't make sense normally because since real estate often appreciates over time, Amortization and depreciation influences the lower EPS artificially, and thus can make a REIT's payout ratio seem to be artificially high. Instead, we can use funds from operations, or FFO, to look at their operating cash flow to gain insights into how safe their dividend is. Another commonly used metric is AFFO, or Adjusted Funds from Operations, which adjusts FFO with CapEx. You can then look at the percentage of AFFO which is paid out as a dividend and use that as a correlation to payout ratio. I'm okay with AFFO being a bit higher than normal payout ratios because REITs are required by law to pay out the majority of their taxable income as dividends. Another metric some like to utilize when evaluating REITs is net asset value. If you're interested in detail how I like to evaluate REITs, then I recommend you watch my Realty Income video where I explain things in more detail like how understanding of triple net REITs tenants is helpful or that REITs dividends payments are unqualified so they can be taxed at regular income rather than nicer capital gains than most regular qualified dividends get. However, since REITs are called pass-through businesses, some of their non-qualified dividends may be eligible for a 20% qualified business income deduction. I'm not a tax person, so I recommend you research REIT taxation carefully before you invest. Because of the tax nuances, and since REITs are taxed basically as ordinary income, I just hold my REITs in tax sheltered accounts like IRAs to simplify my life. In order to keep this video tight, I'll forego calculating FFO and AFFO metrics and leave that to you after you watch my Realty Income video. Ok, in the last 22 years, AMT has had a great almost 12% annualized return, which is way more than SPY, which has had about a 7% return over the same time period. Awesome. Let's see what AMT stock has done in the last 12 months. Now while a purist wouldn't look at stock movement and instead would focus on trends like cash flow over time and then calculate a reasonable value price, I still like to see how the market has been voting on a stock as well. 
AMT is trading around $244 a share, below their 52 week high of about $272 and above their 52 week low of $174. So a slight upward trend in the last year. Let's see how their stock trend looks over a longer period of time. Look at that wonderful appreciation. Let's look at their dividend payouts. AMT has a powerful trend up, like we expected from their awesome CAGR. How about their yield trend? So this upward yield trend is nice to see, and it says that it's becoming more compelling over time, i.e. the dividend has been growing faster than the stock appreciation, which we saw was already nice. Sweet. For REITs, I tend not to look at earnings per share, so we'll skip that one. How about the shares outstanding? Now for most industries, I like to see a decreasing shares outstanding, but for REITs, I'm generally not as concerned, because for REITs to grow, they often need to raise external debt and equity capital from investors, which is why it's somewhat normal to see shares outstanding increasing. REIT management often uses debt, which generally has a lower cost of capital than equity, along with equity, to generate a cost of capital that's lower than the cash that their properties can yield. So the amount of cash flow per share should increase over time, as should the dividend, which in turn usually causes the market to reward the REIT with increasing share price. So as we would expect for AMT, a slight increase in shares outstanding. Let's check how their assets are trending as compared to their liabilities. This isn't a commonly used metric for REITs, but I still like to look at it. Nice, we see what we want in that assets in blue are trending up faster than their liabilities in red. Let's see how their revenue growth looks. Awesome, look at that strong revenue growth. Now let's check out their net income trends. Great, a strong increasing trend. Let's check out their debt. Now, since REITs buy real estate, you may see higher levels of debt than for other types of companies. Speaking of debt, a rise in interest rates usually means an economy is getting stronger, and stronger economies can be good for REITs as people are spending more money and businesses are leasing more space. Apartment REITs like rising interest rates as more people prefer to remain renters, whereas falling interest rates tend to favor home buyers. That being said, falling interest rates can be good for REITs because they can reduce their interest rates, which helps their profitability. If I was doing a deeper analysis, I'd also look at other metrics like debt ratios. Okay, let's move on. The fourth most popular real estate stock in the poll with 27% of voters is Digital Realty Trust, a REIT that invests in data centers for hosting business applications. They have hundreds of data centers across the US, Europe, Asia, Canada, and Australia. They currently have a consensus analyst rating of buy, a good 15 consecutive years of dividend increases, a low 2.88% yield, a good 6.79% three-year dividend CAGR, and a very low beta of 19. In the last 16 years, DLR has had an incredible 22% annualized return, which is absolutely destroying the returns of SPY, which has had about 9% return over the same time period. Let's see what their stock has done in the last 12 months. Digital Realty Trust is trading around $155 a share, below their 52-week high of about $165 and above their 52-week low of $105. Looks like they have easily shrugged off the pandemic, which makes sense given what services they provide. Let's see how their stock trend looks over a longer period of time. So you can see that DLR has been killing it. Let's look at their dividend payouts. We see that Digital Realty Trust has been increasing their dividends nicely, but not as impressively as American Tower. How about their yield trend? So here we see that yield has become less compelling over time, so for existing shareholders you're probably happy, but it makes it look less compelling for newer investors when looking at this metric in isolation. How about the shares outstanding? So we see an even more aggressive dilution of shares for Digital Realty Trust. Let's check how their assets are trending as compared to their liabilities. Awesome, we see that Digital Realty Trust assets are growing much faster than their liabilities. Let's see how their revenue growth looks. DLR has a great ongoing revenue growth trend. Let's check out their net income trends. DLR looks okay here, but not as strong as American Tower, other than the last couple years. Let's check out their debt. Much like AMT, we see that DLR has been driving up their debt, like many REITs. Okay, next. The third most popular real estate stock in the poll with 29% of voters is National Retail Properties, which invests primarily in high-quality properties that are subject to long-term triple-net leases in the United States, including customers like 7-Eleven, LA Fitness, and Chuck E. Cheese. Obviously, during normal times, these are super strong tenants, but during the pandemic, they are struggling. Triple-net leases, aka NNN leases, are when the tenant is responsible for paying property taxes, maintenance, and insurance in addition to rent. They currently have a consensus analyst rating of buy, a decent 10 consecutive years of dividend increases, a high 6.08% yield, a mediocre 4.48% three-year dividend CAGR, and a low beta of 0.65. In the last 25 years, NNN is at a strong 11.2% annualized return, which is beating SPY, which has had about a 9.3% return over the same time period. Let's see what their stock trend has done in the last 12 months. National Retail Properties is trading around $34 a share, below the 52-week high of about 59 and above their 52-week low of about 24. The pandemic definitely has hurt national retail properties due to the tenants they have. Let's see how their stock trend looks over a longer period of time. 
so MNN has been appreciating nicely other than the dip recently due to COVID. Let's look at their dividend payouts. So we see a positive trend of increasing dividends, but at a slower rate than the others. How about their yield trend? So similar to DLR, we see that NNN's yield has become slightly less compelling over time. How about their shares outstanding? So another aggressive dilution of shares to enable growth for national retail properties. Let's check how their assets are trending as compared to their liabilities. So a stronger asset growth trend than a liability trend, which I like to see. Let's see how their revenue growth looks. Nice, just like I like to see, an increasing revenue growth trend. How about their net income? NNN has a decent trend here, though not as nice as American Tower. Let's check out their debt. So a similar debt trend to NNN as the others. Okay, let's move on to number two on the list. The second most popular real estate stock in the poll with 31% of voters is Universal Health Realty Income Trust, which is a REIT which specializes in healthcare and human service facilities. They have 71 investments in 20 states, including hospitals, medical office buildings, rehab hospitals, and child care centers. They have a great 34 consecutive years of dividend increases, a high 4.96% yield, a weak 1.52% three-year dividend CAGR, and a low beta of 0.78. In the last 25 years, UHG has a strong 12.2% annualized return, which is beating SPY, which had about a 9.3% return over the same time period. Let's see what their stock has done in the last 12 months. The Universal Health Realty Income Trust is trading around $56 a share, way below their 52-week high of a 132 and barely above their 52-week low of 52.77. The pandemic has definitely hurt them. Let's see how their stock trend looks over a long period of time. So UHD has been appreciating nicely like the others. Let's look at their dividend payouts. So we see a nice slow increasing trend for UHD, but at potentially the slowest rate of all the others. How about their yield trend? So perhaps the most extreme example amongst its peers of becoming less compelling over time due to small dividend increases relative to stock appreciation. How about their shares outstanding? So we still see some share dilution, but less aggressive than most peers. Let's check how their assets are trending as compared to their liabilities. UHD has the least compelling asset to liabilities trend of the bunch. Let's see how their revenue growth looks. Nice increasing trend. How about their net income? So this looks like the least compelling trend, but due to the spike in the middle, it merits reviewing the actual underlying numbers rather than just rely on the graph to see it really is mostly flat. Let's check out their debt. So UHD's debt trend seems in line with others, albeit at a less amount. Okay, let's move on to number one. But before we get there, we did have store capital at number 9 in the list, and then we had WP Carry at number 8, and then Federal Realty Investment Trust at number 7, and finally Public Storage at number 6. So it should be no surprise that the number one REIT in the lands, with an outstanding 79% of the vote, is none other than the monthly dividend company itself, Realty Income, ticker O. I've done a lengthy video on Realty Income, and I also did a fun new milestone update video where I hit a new monthly income goal that you might enjoy checking out. They have declared over 500 consecutive monthly dividends and have increased their dividend around 70 times due to their nice cash flow coming from the over 3,500 diverse properties they own. They currently have a consensus analyst rating of buy, an awesome 25 consecutive years of dividend increases, which is why they're an aristocrat now, have a good 4.71% yield, an okay 4.26% three-year dividend CAGR, and a nice low beta of 66. In the last 25 years, O has had an incredible 13.76 annualized return, which is beating SPY, which has had about a 9.3% return over the same time period. Let's see what their stock has done in the last 12 months. O is trading around $60 a share, well below their 52-week high of about 85 and well above their 52-week low of 38. As you can see, the pandemic hurt them, but they are gradually recovering. Let's see how their stock trend looks over a longer period of time. So O has a nice long trend like the others. Let's look at their dividend payouts. Here we see a gradual trend up, but the data has a different starting year, unfortunately. How about their yield trend? So O is looking a bit less attractive over time when we look at this metric in isolation, which you never should do, but it is helpful to see a slew of trends to help formulate your investing thoughts. How about their shares outstanding? Like the other REITs, we see that Realty Income is growing its share count. It would be fun to see a REIT still growing and doing the opposite, though that would be quite the challenge. Let's check out how their assets are trending as compared to their liabilities. O has one of the more compelling asset to liabilities trends of the bunch. Let's see how their revenue growth looks. Nice increasing trend. How about their net income? So Realty Income has one of the most compelling profit lines of the bunch. Gotta love that. Let's check out their debt. O follows a similar debt trend as others. Cool. So there you have it. The top five real estate dividend stocks was voted on my dividend discord server and in line with my own thoughts. Now I want to tell you an inspirational story I found online that I think you'll like. A man found a cocoon of a butterfly. One day a small opening appeared. He sat and watched the butterfly for several hours as it struggled to force its body through that little hole until it suddenly stopped making any progress and it looked like it was stuck. 
So the man decided to help the butterfly. He took a pair of scissors and snipped off the remaining bit of the cocoon. The butterfly then emerged easily, although it had a swollen body and small, shriveled wings. The man didn't think anything of it as he sat there waiting for the wings to enlarge to support the butterfly, but that didn't happen. The butterfly spent the rest of its life unable to fly, crawling around with tiny wings and a swollen body. Despite the kind heart of the man, he didn't understand that the restricting cocoon and the struggle needed by the butterfly to get itself through the small opening was a way of forcing fluid from the body of the butterfly into its wings to prepare itself for flying once it was out of the cocoon. Moral of the story? Our struggles in life develop our strengths. Without struggles, we never grow and we never get stronger, so it's important for us to tackle challenges and not be relying on help from others. I think it's fine to seek help when it's needed, just don't use it as a crutch. I ask you to think about the story the next time you're struggling and realize that you can and will succeed even though the path might not be obvious or easy. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Leave me a comment if you did, I'd really appreciate it. These videos take a lot of time and energy for me to create, so please consider hitting the thumbs up button, subscribing if you haven't yet, and click that bell notification. Thanks, I really appreciate your support. Also, if you'd like to directly support me in my message, then consider signing up on Patreon.com. Oh, in the description of this video, I have a M1 brokerage referral link. They normally run free cash promotions if you click on the link and then open a non-retirement account and transfer some cash in. Regardless of what brokerage you open, I encourage you to invest intelligently. Finally, a simple way you could consider supporting me is by clicking my Amazon affiliate link in the description of this video and then go shopping online. As an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. And please join my Dividend Discord server and come chat with me and thousands of other investors. Thanks, and I'll talk to you again real soon. I am not a financial advisor, and these videos are for entertainment, inspiration, and educational purposes only. Investing of any kind involves risk. I am only sharing my opinion with no guarantee of gains or losses on investments.